Hello, everyone. We are now in the next episode of the Investment Immigration Podcast, and I'm your host, Salman Siddiqui from Berlin. So this week, we're going to talk about the residency by investment options in Latvia. Latvia is a small Baltic nation with less than 2 million people in Northern Europe. As a stringent member country, residents and citizens there enjoy visa-free travel all over Europe. Latvia, especially its capital Riga, is actually known for its strong transport and cultural links with Western Europe and Russia. Now, although Latvia's residency by investment program has been around for more than a decade, it has come under new, renewed interest in recent times. In this episode, we are going to talk about why this is the case and whether foreign investors are now seeing Latvia as a viable destination and perhaps for some the only destination available to them in Europe. Given the fact that other residencies by investment routes uh, such as Ireland are now no longer on the table. Also, we'll talk about the impact of the Ukraine war on Latvia's residency program and whether investments in real estate there is still a possibility. To help us understand all of this, this week my guest is Philip May who's the CEO of EC Holdings, and currently he's talking to us from Indonesia. Welcome to the show, Philip. Good afternoon to Berlin. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you so much. So, you know, let's get the elephant out of the room here, Philip. And Latvia is Russia's neighbor. Now, with the Ukraine war going on in Europe, why would any investor consider investing there? And how do you convince foreign investors that it's still a good option, despite the volatile situation in the region? Well, uh, first of all, uh, Latvia is uh, a member of the EU and of NATO. The EU is a neighbor of Russia, not just Latvia. Japan is a neighbor of Russia, too. Even the US is a neighbor of Russia. Uh, Finland is a neighbor of Russia. And uh, Russia and the Ukraine, obviously, they have uh, very serious bilateral issues, but uh, the general perception is not that this is going to spill out into an all-out conflict between US on one hand and Russia on the other hand. That would affect Latvia in particular. So we are perfectly fine with Latvia at EC Holdings and uh, Don't forget that as a Schengen member country, a Latvian resident is free to travel anywhere to the Schengen and EU area visa-free, which is often the purpose for taking up this residency. It's not about moving to Latvia necessarily. It's not about bringing the whole family, spending the whole time there. Sometimes it's just about having that residency, being able to go back and forth, having a plan B, having a second home, but not about putting all your assets and all your life into that country. Right. And we haven't heard much about Latvia's residency by investment program. And why is it now, I should say, coming into more focus and more interest? Can you explain that a little bit? There are different reasons why there has not been more publicity attached to the Latvian residency program. One reason is certainly the soon defunct Portugal Golden Visa program. That program has outshined all the other programs in Europe simply because Portugal not only offered a residence, but it offered a road to citizenship for people even who do not spend the majority of their time in Portugal. The physical presence requirements in Portugal were, and actually as per today, still are limited. So you can take a residency, a golden visa in Portugal, work towards citizenship and apply after holding the residency for five years. In Latvia, the timeline is much longer and the physical presence requirement is much higher. Even worse, in Spain or in Italy, it takes 10 years. Uh, You have to spend more than half of the year there. Similar in Greece. So Portugal was the most attractive program. And with Portugal gone, there is no other options for investors who seek uh, citizenship by residence. And all the other European programs, Spain, Greece, Italy, and Latvia, they are pretty much on par. Out of those, Latvia is the most cost efficient. So 
That's why Latvia came into the spotlight again. Of course, there are other smaller differences we can talk about throughout the show, but Latvia is now very much in demand among the investor migration community. Right. And like you just mentioned, you know, Latvia's program has been around. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's been there since 2010, at least. But there has been a recent change in the program. I mean, you would know better, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Can applicants no longer apply to uh, Latvia's program via investment in real estate? Is that true? Has that ended since 2022 because of the ongoing situation in Europe? No, that's not correct. There was some misinformation in the public space. A lot of people believe that the real estate option got closed. I myself was under that impression for a short time, but obviously my partners in EC Holdings, my Latvian partners, clarified that the real estate option is still there and you can still apply for a residence in Latvia if you buy real estate worth 250,000 euro or more. Wow, okay. That's news to me too, because what I've read uh, on the internet was that perhaps it has come to an end in way uh, a year ago. So that's good news to hear. So can you explain the real estate option then? Like, can we invest, can an investor put their money in, say, a residential apartment or, or, or a villa? Or does it have to be a commercial property, like a hotel? Like, are there any limitations? No, not much limitations there. So first of all, of course, a lot of things written on the internet uh, is wrong. And as in the case of many citizenship and residency program. When something is being proposed by the government or being discussed in parliament, some people take it at face value and some journalists make a story out of it uh, that this or that country has announced, decided in this way or another. But often it turns out that it is not actually legislation yet. Some people believe that the Portuguese program is closed. Some they even have believed since November when the government made an announcement Portugal is a democracy with a parliament, so government has to make a proposal to the parliament, parliament has to discuss it, has to vote on it, and even when the parliament has voted, the president has to sign it off, the constitutional court has to check it, etc. Similar in Latvia. So there was some discussion about ending the real estate option, but that has never came into law, so the option is still there. And In Latvia, like in many Western countries, the real estate market is pretty open to foreigners. You don't have to be a citizen to buy. You don't even have to be a resident. So you can buy pretty much anything, residential property, houses, freehold, apartments, uh, not much limitation there. Now, before we go a little bit more on that, let's also talk about the other investment routes that are available for people looking for residencies there. So apart from the real estate option, then what other options are there? The most common option is the investment in a Latvian company. At EC Holdings, we offer this route for a total sum of 100,000 euro, which means 50,000 by law have to be invested in a Latvian company which pays a minimum of 40,000 euro taxes a year. So special purpose vehicle companies are set up for investors who pool their investment in the Latvian company. We make sure the funds are in, in a conservative way so that the revenues suffice to pay the required taxes. And with that, the legal requirements are fulfilled. The other 50,000 is in various fees, also depend individually on the case, but uh, round figure uh, 100,000. And in terms of investment, 50,000, which have to be kept in the company as long as the residency is maintained. So you cannot withdraw the investment without losing the residency after it expires. I see. Okay. And that's for if somebody wants to buy equity in a company, right? And the other option is the option to buy government bonds and the loans in a bank. Those are the other options, right? We do not promote or even deal with the other options. We only deal with real estate, which is a free market. Anyone can buy 
any real estate, unlike in Portugal, where there is two categories of real estate. One is on the free market, where the amount is higher. One is kind of approved real estate, uh, where the amounts are lower. There is no uh, approved real estate in Latvia. Any real estate counts. Right. Let's now talk about more about the option of investing in a in a business or a company in, in Latvia as a route to obtain residency. You mentioned some requirements and conditions. If we could talk a little bit more about it, you mentioned like you need to have at least 100,000 euros in capital and then 50,000 is the fees. And then there's also 10,000 for another fees, isn't it? So yeah. 10,000 is one government fee. There is some other fees for governmental bodies. The usual lump sum amount of total of all fees, including our own, is about 50,000 euro. So the total figure comes to 100,000, of which half is invested and the other half is considered a cost. Right. And are there any specific um, industries or sectors that are prioritized for these investments or can one put uh, money in basically any company, any Latvian company, there must be some restrictions or some conditions to that as well, isn't it? Well, the condition is that the Latvian company pays 40,000 euro tax per year. That is the key thing. In which industry, in which sector the company is active, that is not defined by the law. But that condition of finding a company which pays at least 40,000 euros in taxes isn't that a bit high? And how does one go about finding such companies? That's our job. Our partners in Latvia set up such companies for their clients, for our clients. Uh, so these are special purpose vehicles where the underlying investment of the company usually goes into real estate. Nothing to do with the 250000 It's a company investment. So we pool up to 10 investors in one company use the funds to buy real estate so that there is a steady stream of income sufficient to pay taxes. And with that, the requirements are fulfilled. And this one-time payment of uh, 10,000 euros that goes to the state budget, presumably. So what is the purpose of this payment and how does the Latvian government utilize it? Is it, I mean, is that a mandatory requirement? Yes, absolutely. I mean, in Portugal, they charge about five, six thousand euros for a residency card of one person, not of one family. So the amounts are higher there. In Spain, the amounts are lower. So each country has its own governmental fees. And 10,000, I think, is a very uh, reasonable amount for a Schengen and EU member country. OK, so we know this option of a special vehicle, you know, company that you set up for residencies. But do you see also people interested in perhaps setting up a business or investing in a in a known business in Latvia? Or is the government sort of nudging foreign investors to put their money in certain sectors there? So people who want to run a business actively by themselves in Latvia, they often apply for their residency initially through a passive investment of 50,000 in such a special purpose vehicle, and then go on to set up their own company separately. They could apply directly with their own company. However, the requirements are quite complex and uh, applicants have to submit the very credible business plan, et cetera, et cetera. So the investment in a company of ours, in fact, is much more convenient and efficient and most people don't want to go the much longer and uncertain route of proving to the authorities that they have an operating company which qualifies them as an entrepreneur. Besides that, the amount of 50,000 is so small that those who are into moving to Latvia and running business full time find it more efficient to do that than to set up a company on their own where the capital requirements is usually more intensive. Okay. And what does one get after that? Like, do you get a permanent residence immediately or you no. get a temporary permit? Could you explain that? Correct. That In Latvia, applicants initially get a temporary residence for five years. And after five years, they may renew that temporary residence for another five years, or they may opt, like in Portugal, to apply for a permanent residency. That's a difference with uh, Malta, for example, where investors can get the permanent residency 
right away. Obviously, at much higher cost. Otherwise, everybody would be there. There's a market for almost everything. So temporary first and then renewal after five years or conversion to permanent residence. So how long does one have to wait to get permanent residency there then? Five years. Five years after the temporary residence is issued, he can apply for the permanent residence. However, uh, as a word of warning, the permanent residency requires a stringent language test in Latvian language. So definitely not something for most of the investors. Instead, most just keep their temporary residence and keep renewing it every five years. Given that the amounts required are much lower than in countries like uh, Greece or, or Spain or Italy, that's still a very attractive proposition. Right. But just to uh, clarify, I mean, I want to understand the kind of rights that someone on a temporary residence permit has mm -hmm. compared to, say, a permanent residency one. So oh. you can you are saying that you can still buy property, you can still sell the property, yes. you can still it's, rent out that yeah. property on a temporary residence permit. It's all the same. The only difference between temporary and permanent residence is that permanent residency can convert to citizenship. Temporary cannot. You can be a temporary resident for 20 years but still not apply for citizenship. But in terms of mobility, traveling to other Schengen countries or entering other Schengen countries from outside, owning property, owning business, running accounts, permanent and temporary residence is absolutely the same. Taxes is the same as well. Some countries, uh, I'm not sure about in Europe, but in Singapore, taxes for permanent residents are lower, at least uh, in the property sector. That's not the case in Latvia. I see. Okay. And since you also mentioned a citizenship, how long does it take one to get citizenship if somebody is interested? Is it 20 years or is it no, less? No, not that long. It's eight years. So you get the temporary residence first. After five years, you can get the permanent residence and then you can apply for citizenship. But again, the language requirement, even to get the permanent residence, is very stringent. There is also a physical presence requirement, so you need to spend most of your time in Latvia. So it's only for those who are effectively living in Latvia, not for others. Oh, okay. All right. That's interesting. So even for the permanent residency, you would need to live in the country for a considerable amount of time. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Correct. Exactly. That's also the case in most other EU country, Portugal, the big exception so far. Now, before we talk a little bit more about the other options, I also want to, from you, you, since you mentioned Portugal, I want you to compare Latvia's residency by investment program to other similar programs that you've seen in Europe. And how is it supposedly more affordable? And is that even true? I mean, you mentioned that it's so much cheaper, but do you get the same kind of benefits? that you would get in the other countries that we're offering? Of course, because a residency in a Schengen country always gives you access to the other Schengen countries as well. So Schengen countries don't issue residency permits that are limited to their country only. And given there is no border control between the Schengen countries, it also wouldn't make any sense. So uh, the benefits are the same. Okay. And what is a typical timeline for applicants from, say, the application submission to receiving uh, residency approval? That depends on the country of origin of the applicant. In uh, most cases, including uh, India, interestingly, it's just about uh, 30 days. In some cases, it's two to three months. That's mostly from Middle Eastern countries. But even that, uh, two to three months is not a long time compared to what we see, for example, in Portugal. So the fast processing is another big advantage of Latvia besides the relatively low investment amount. Right. Yeah, that is really fast, actually. 30 days uh, to 60 days is really good. And I'm also surprised by you sharing this with us, that people from India and the Middle East are really looking into the 
residency by investment option in Latvia? Because traditionally, from what I had heard was people from, say, you know, Russia or close by countries were taking advantage of the program because it makes sense it's close by. But you're saying that other countries are also have been there and they are taking huge interest. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. For Indians, it's a bit faster than for those from the Middle East because the countries are categorized differently. It's also a matter of banking. People become shareholder in a Latvian company. The Latvian company has to maintain a bank account, so bank due diligence applies. And again, that is more stringent for some Middle Eastern countries. But nevertheless, the total amount of time required is very low. Now, you mentioned the due diligence process. So let's talk a little bit about that. What does that entail? Um, Who in Latvia does an applicant have to take their applications? I mean, is there a specific authority there? What would they have to be careful about if you can share some insights into that? Well, the requirements are pretty similar like in other EU countries. Applicants have to provide a criminal record from their country of residence and their country of origin. That's the key document. As for the source of funds, the due diligence is outsourced to the banks. So the banks where the companies hold accounts check the source of funds of the shareholders of the company. So it's an indirect uh, due diligence by the government. They license the bank and the banks check the due diligence and the source of income should be declared. Besides that, um, The usual documents are required, like uh, passports, or in the case of couples, a marriage certificate, etc., attested or with an apostille. And then the Latvian authorities at the immigration office and the affiliated agencies, they do their checks against the usual databases. Right. Thank you for sharing that. And also, if you could share with us that does an applicant have to visit Latvia for their application, or can they get it? an affidavit with a lawyer to represent them and file an application on their behalf? They have to visit Latvia. They can, we can submit the application on their behalf, but eventually they have to go to Latvia to do their biometrics. And once done, they have to collect their identity card in person as well. So they need to spend a a few days, a few working days in Latvia to finalize the process. And once they have finalized that process, they don't have to stay there for a month or two, or they can just leave? No. Correct. So there is no physical presence requirement to maintain that residency status. Okay, great. Let's talk also about one aspect of the residency program is the ability to include family members in the residency application. So can you explain the requirements and benefits of including family members in the application? Are there any specific requirements of who can be included, who cannot be included? Latvia is very simple and straightforward in this matter. A family application can include, besides the main applicant, a spouse and children up to 18 years. That's all. And do they have to pay each family member an extra fee for that? Yes, there is a small extra fee of about 5,000 euros that we charge uh, as an administrative fees, but uh, the investment amount remains the same. Okay, great. And if we could share some success stories of, you know, of foreign investors who have taken this residency route in Latvia, if you have any experiences, please share with us, especially if you're seeing a trend of people having, including their families there, Or is it mostly foreign investors looking to, for example, park their money in real estate? Uh, What are you observing? Well, if you go to Latvia and you look around, you will see some Asian restaurants. And these restaurants are usually run by investment migrants from Asia. These are normally very successful businesses, not spectacular, not huge conglomerates, small businesses, but nevertheless very profitable. Then you have real estate investors who do not just buy and hold real estate, but who develop real estate. Those are usually from Eastern Europe. So you do see an impact of the program on the national economy, and you do see success stories on the ground of such immigrants. Right. And 
if you could also tell us about you know the kind of regulations or or safeguards that are in place to protect foreign investors interests and their investments in the country like anything can go wrong in an invest if somebody invests in a company and they face some legal issue are there any protections for that investment in place well that's maybe a bit too general of a question but for sure people who invest in a company that is holding real estate which is then rented out they go into a low risk industry latvia as a full fledged eu member has a robust legal system so it's not an environment uh, where you need local partners in order to get things done where corruption is rife in fact latvia and if you go you can see and you can experience this is a very well organized country the small size is definitely helpful and uh, even if you do a secondary research and you browse the internet uh, you won't find many bad stories from latvia latvia is not known for being a shady place or being prone to scandals so generally the legal environment is safe foreign ownership of uh, local assets is permitted and the investors don't usually face challenges if they don't venture out into high risk business like anywhere in the world right and if a foreign investor is now seriously considering latvia as a destination for their residencies what investment do you recommend to them is it mostly real estate is the number one option or the special purpose vehicle that you mentioned mm. in a company is the one you recommend yeah the company investment is much more popular than real estate simply because the amount is five times lower if one buys a real estate it has to be a minimum of 250000 plus there is additional paperwork required plus there is no approved real estate so when you buy you have to do your own research while in portugal if you buy an approved real estate you know uh, okay that real estate has been checked by the government and deemed eligible for the golden visa that's not the case in latvia so real estate requires a higher amount and maybe a bit more uh, due diligence on behalf of the investor. And therefore, and of course, because of the significant uh, difference in the amount, the company investment is uh, by far the most popular option. Okay, now we're coming close to the end of our episode. But before we go that, I want to talk a little bit more about Latvia's program and whether seeing the trends that we are seeing in Europe, how a lot of programs are facing pressure from the European Commission, especially in terms of due diligence, and maybe they've been told to shut down at least certain parts of their programs. So given this climate that we have in Europe, if an investor is looking at Latvia and they're thinking about it, what would you say to them? I mean, you don't see any kind of indications that similar things might happen there. What are your words for perhaps encouragement that you say to investors about that? I would tell them the same that I have been saying for years. If investment migration is on your mind, do it as soon as possible. Do it before it's too late. In my life in this industry in the last eight, ten years, I have seen several programs closing. And every time when a program closed, there were people who regretted not having done it, who were thinking about it, but who always had a reason to not go ahead and then it was suddenly too late especially in Hungary we have seen that in Portugal now there is a bit of a grace period so people can rush so my advice is go ahead don't wait because there is no retroactive closure those who got their residency permits they will keep it even after a program is closed that's a general misconception people think oh the program is closed i lose my golden visa no you don't lose anything but there cannot be new applicants. And given the amount required by Latvia is relatively low, I would say the program is almost, not really, but almost too good to be true. So don't chilly-shelly, go ahead and apply. The EU is waging a kind of ideological battle. It's not about security. We all know that. Security issues are when you have illegal, undocumented migrants coming over the border in Greece or in Italy en masse without any documents. 
That's a security issue. Not when wealthy investors who provide police clearances and due diligence to bank come in a few thousand. It's a negative attitude to wealthy people. It's the hate the rich rhetoric of the left. You in Germany, you see that every day, obviously, with the far left, Green Party, etc., holding sway over political life. So we don't know what will be the outcome of all this. Obviously, not all the EU countries are as negative as, let's say, Germany when it comes to wealthy people. That's why we still have a large number of EU countries with a residency program. Latvia is one of them, Malta is another one. And these programs will remain there for a while. But we don't know how long. And maybe a country will close it even without any pressure of the EU, just because it feels that the program has served its purpose. That uh, may even happen outside the European Union. So anyone interested who has the means to do it, don't wait too long. It's never going to be easier. It's never going to be cheaper than today. The best time to do it is now. Okay, good. And you explained a lot of things there. And the only thing I would say back to that is the European Commission certainly has its gaze on programs in the EU, especially. but certain concerns about due diligence. If a country's due diligence is robust, then they, well, shouldn't have a problem with the uh, country's residency program. But uh, moving on, I mean, I want to talk about if there are any restrictions on certain nationalities who can apply for Latvia's residency by investment program. Are there any restrictions, for example, from people who are from Russia or from Belarus or any other country where there are problems for them if they apply for mm. residency. Well, are, what are you seeing in, in terms of that? Other than the two countries you have mentioned, I'm unaware of any restrictions. De facto, some nationals from sanctioned countries like Iran or North Korea, they may face issues when dealing with the banks in Latvia. But from the government side, only Russia and Belarus are restricted at the time being. I see. Thank you so much for clarifying all of that, Philip. You know, you've already explained the program to us. A lot of people, I'm sure, got new information from this episode, especially, you know, the fact that the real estate option is still there on the table in Latvia. Some people, I'm sure, were not even aware that Latvia has this kind of program with so many options there. So I'm very thankful some people, to you. Some people are not even aware that Latvia exists. <laughs> they don't know it's a country. That is so true. That is so true. So thank you again, uh, Philip. And I hope to, hope to see you again in our show in the future. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon in Berlin. Thank you.